How many of you have an older brother or sister? You know that wonderful feeling you get when you finally pull one over on them? Boy, that morning I had them and I knew it. They wanted my banana. But big brothers do not beg little brothers for anything. They either beat them up and take it away by brute force, or they lie to them and trick them out of it somehow. So my brothers said, hey, Kent, do you know how bananas are made? I said, no. I was only six years old. It's been proven in laboratory tests. The brain doesn't even start to grow till kids are 18 to 20. How many parents can verify that one from raising kids? Yep. I said, no, how are bananas made? And they said, well, down in South America, they have these spiders that live up in the trees. And when they die, all their legs fold up and mold begins to grow on the dead spider legs. And a banana is really nothing but moldy spider legs. I said, you guys are lying to me. You just want this banana because you know it's the last one. They said, no, brother, we're not lying. You cut that thing in half and look in the middle. You can still see the black spots where his legs were. I did not eat bananas for nearly three years after that. <laughs> they lied to me. Have you ever been lied to before? You know, I would not have believed the lie if it hadn't been for those black spots. See, if you want to get somebody to believe a lie, you have to mix it with some truth. That's a technique they've used for years to kill rats. You don't give the rat a bowl of poison. You give the rat a bowl of good food with a little poison mixed in. They're mixing two things together that really do not belong together. See, rat poison is 99.995% good food. That's how you trick them. They've done the same thing for years to sell Marlboro cigarettes. They mix them in with cowboys. You can watch any Marlboro commercial. There's something about a cowboy in there. Have you stopped and thought about that? What is the connection between smoking Marlboro and cowboys? Do all cowboys smoke Marlboro? No. Do you have to smoke Marlboro to be a cowboy? No. If you start smoking Marlboro, do you become a cowboy automatically? No. <laughs> you may smell like a horse, but you are not a cowboy. Okay? Actually, it's been proven in laboratory tests that nobody in the world smokes. Nobody smokes. Only the cigarette smokes. The person is the sucker. That's all. I think they ought to put the real name on those things. We ought to have some truth in advertising. You know, they should really be calling them cancerettes, breath rotters, bypass, malignant, phlegm balls, and money suckers. Mm -hmm. They do the same thing with beer, though. They try to associate beer with sports. What does beer have to do with sports? They get some big football player holding his can of Bud Dumber. Or Bud Stupid. They call it Bud Wiser. <laughs> it don't make him any wiser, that's for sure. He's got his Bud Dumber, Miller Low Life, or Dead Dog, whatever it is. He says, man, you drink this stuff and you will be a football player. Yeah, right. The Bible says, you drink that stuff, you will wreck your life. Who hath woe, who hath wounds without cause, they that tarry long at the wine. The Bible says, don't even look at it when it gets fermented. Habakkuk said, woe to him and giveth his neighbor drink. There's a lot in the Bible about don't even touch that stuff. One kid said, what's the matter, Hovind? Don't you like beer? I said, I don't know. I've never tasted it. I'm 52 years old, never had a drop in my life. Well, I've had NyQuil a couple times. but He said, how do you know you won't like it if you don't try it? I said, now, son, that's a brilliant way to live your life. Let me ask you a question, son. Have you ever laid your head under a semi-truck? Well, how do you know you won't like it if you don't try it? <laughs> you don't have to try everything to figure out if it's good or bad, okay? There are other ways to learn, you know, <laughs> like watching somebody else do it. Wow, don't do that. That will hurt, you know? Like famous redneck last words. Hey, y'all, watch this, you know. Uh. <laughs> I like science, folks. I collect science books, and there, there's a lot of good science in these books, but there's some poison mixed with it. It's kind of like the rat poison. It's not the good food I'm against. It's the poison. We like science. We have Dinosaur Adventure Land in Pensacola. Come on down, pay us a visit. It's a science center, a museum, and a theme park, all based on creation. We're having so much fun. We've had over 50,000 visitors now just in the first couple years we've been open. Lots of things to do down there. we got a seven-foot snake that ate a kid last week. She's gone now. But uh, that's okay. There's a lot of kids, and you can always make another one. Uh, we have uh, lots of things to play with. We collect skins and skulls of animals. So you hunters get out there and send me Bambi's, uh, Bambi's daddy's uh, head, if you want, for our museum. <laughs> Everything we do has a science lesson and a spiritual lesson. We like science at our place. We have all kinds of fun things to do. John shot the T-Rex and hung his head on the building right there. Have a museum all based on creation and a science center with everything with hands on science lessons and spiritual lessons. Matter of fact, we teach the kids the scientific way to shoot a rubber band. I need a boy and a girl who would like to learn the scientific way to shoot a rubber band. Who would like to learn? Okay, that boy right there, come on up here. And one girl, let's get one girl. Come on. 
Way back there. Okay, hurry, run, 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 run. Let's go. The scientific way to shoot a rubber band. What's your name, sir? Josh. How old are you, Josh? I was 10 for a whole year one time. That's amazing. I was supposed to be 11, but I was sick for three years when I was two and a half. Okay. And how old are you going to be when you're almost 12? 11. And uh, how much does your mom pay you to be good? So you're good for nothing, and you're 10. Okay, good. Pick a rubber band out of here, Josh. Okay, the brown one. And what's your name, ma'am? Laura. Pick a rubber band out of there, Laura. You want the pink one, of course. Oh, girl. Okay. Now, what I want you to do, Josh and Laura, we're going to stand here and shoot the rubber band down the center aisle. Go ahead. Oh, that, that, that one won't work. That's a double one here. Let me try, try an orange one here. That's two tied together. I didn't see that. Okay, Josh, shoot the rubber band down the center aisle. Past the table. Not too far. Laura, give it a try. Come on. Ooh, three rows back. Now watch carefully. I'm going to get down the same size as you guys. And I'm going to show you the scientific way to shoot a rubber band. You ready for this? I want you to notice now, my fingers do not leave my hand at any time. <laughs> you believe that? Okay, now pay attention. See the guy sitting in the way back of the church? Oh, about three-fourths of the way there. Now, probably right about now, you're thinking of a question that has uh, five words in it. What question are you thinking of? How do you do that? See, I told you it had five words in it, right? Now, before I show you how to do this, I want to explain something. Some kids should not learn how to do some things. Because they become what's known as a menace to society. <laughs> Who's responsible for this kid right here? Where's your mom and dad? Is he safe with this information? <laughs> Mom says no. And who's, who's responsible for this one here? Where's Nobody? Oh, back there. Did your husband come? No. Okay, now pay attention. The scientific way to shoot a rubber band, okay? There are two sides to the rubber band. Are you with me so far? Okay. One side represents your flesh, that's your body, okay? The other side is your spirit. Now, your spirit has to live in your flesh or else you're dead. See, if your spirit ever leaves your flesh, you got a real problem on your hands. Actually, the neighbors do. Okay, But what most people do wrong in rubber band shooting and in real life, they put the same emphasis on the flesh and the spirit. See, if you pull both sides the same and let it fly, if you could watch it in slow motion, the both sides are going... And all the energy is wasted inside the rubber band because the flesh and the spirit are fighting with each other. So... The secret to high-speed velocity through a fluid medium such as the atmosphere, which offers resistance, is to minimize or eliminate the turbulence. Okay? <laughs> All I did when you guys weren't watching was stretch one side tighter than the other. One side's tight. Now pay attention, okay? What's going to happen, if you do it right, the spirit leads the flesh takes away most of the turbulence, and it goes much farther. Got the guy in the back row. So, when I'm up here with a whole pile of rubber bands, knowing I can hit anybody in the room, it gives you this feeling of power that some kids really just don't know how to handle. You know what I'm talking about? You're thinking about it right now, aren't you? Yes, I thought so. Let's give them a hand. Have a seat, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> The Bible says, the flesh lusteth against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh. They're contrary. One to this is why some of you are not going to go very far in your spiritual life. You feed the flesh too much. Shut off the TV once in a while, you know, simple. Okay? Wait till you see our super airplanes go. Tomorrow, we're going to show our super airplanes. I make paper airplanes that go so far, if they don't land in a tree or on a building, they go all the way to the ground. Our record with a paper airplane is 450 feet. We're going to put them completely over the building, including the steeple, tomorrow. But we'll do that tomorrow. Okay. We like science. We're not against science. But I'm against poison mixed in with the science. That's all. Here's a first grade textbook. I'll show you what I'm talking about. They tell the kids in first grade, Earth has changed much since its formation four and a half billion years ago. Now just hold on a minute. Is the Earth four and a half billion years old? No, as we'll see in a minute. But if you tell that to a first grader, he's going to believe you. First graders believe everything you tell them. They believe bananas are moldy spider legs. <laughs> I did. 
And then tell them again in second grade, since its formation four and a half billion years ago, Earth has changed. Down at the bottom it says, life too has evolved on Earth. This word evolved is a very tricky word. I've done over 90 debates and about 7,000 radio and TV call-in talk shows, and I've learned how to win the debate on evolution in the first five minutes. It is so easy. If somebody says, do you believe in evolution? I say, well, what do you mean? Well, you know, evolution. No, which one are you talking about? There are six meanings to the word. Are you talking about cosmic evolution, the origin of time, space, matter? I don't believe in that, with the Big Bang. We'll talk about that in a minute. Are we talking about chemical evolution? Because according to the Big Bang Theory, the Big Bang, you know, produced hydrogen and maybe some helium. Well, then how do we get all these other elements? Do you want me to believe uranium evolved from hydrogen? They'll say, well, yeah, fusion. You have fusion in stars. Yeah, but you can't fuse past iron very well. Number two, you've got a chicken and an egg problem here because you have to have the stars to make the elements and the elements to make the stars.